You may think you know Brazil. Samba, bikini waxing, carnival, and that wicked little cachaça-fueled concoction known as the caprinha. All fantastic things. But let's get real. These things represent some Condé Nast writer's take on the tourist board's version of what is, in reality, a multi-layered and fascinating place. I've been lucky enough to visit and shoot the Rio area several times, photographing locals, falling in love with their warmth and passion. You think you know Brazil? Join me on a local style, grassroots, barn burning, food eating, wine drinking, surf chasing caravan from Rio to Sao Paulo. Brazil like you've never seen it. This is Zio Does Brazil. Our trip starts in Rio de Janeiro. They say great characters have layers, intrinsic ironies that conflict them. I see this in Rio, a complex place where nightlife debauchery blurs into daytime fun. I love Rio. I've been there a few times and I am always happy to return. Aloha. Huh? This is Rico de Souza. Having been part of the surf scene for over 60 years, he is a pioneer of surfing in Brazil. He's known worldwide, having traveled to Hawaii, California, Japan, and bringing all that surf stoke back home to share. Yeah, I can He's a tough guy. This is one I did use because I felt too. I don't like heavy boards, you know? It's a little, a little too heavy. Yeah, for me, but it has to be heavy for... This is already given to me, and this I use in Sunset too. Boards. I do love surfboards. I'm not sure why. It's kind of a weird thing if you think about it, but I can look at old surfboards all day long. If there is a self-help group for this disease, please let me know. I live surfing, seeing wood boards, long boards, one fin, the two, tw tw twin fin, three fin, four fin. The stand up I brought to Brazil with the Kelana family in Macarra, you know. So I bring all this and I'm very proud to be in the water, you know what I mean? I will finish my bar here. First desire I do, go to Hawaii surf sunset because that's my, my blood, you know, surf sunset. There's nothing better than surf sunset in the world. I'm gonna be 6'8". Money, you win, you lose, you, doesn't matter, you know. You don't have much to live, you know, just enough to travel, to eat well, give education for the family. All the rest don't need. If it comes more, better. If it don't come, I can leave. I go to Hawaii since 72, almost 50. I stay in my house, friends, sleep on the floor, sleep in a bed, go to camp land, and I go to Hawaii, all the Hawaiians like me, you know? Because I was the first one to go there, and I respect the people, you know? I met uh, all the, the hardcore guys, and I'm humble, I like them, I respect, you know, don't make fight, let them catch their way first, be humble, so you make friends. And I still have a desire to keep surfing, you know what I mean? Surf is the number one every day, you know, every day. If I don't surf, I jump rope, if I don't jump rope, I run or swim because when you come er, uh, late, the most important thing you have beside your family, the values you have is your health. You know, if you don't have health, you don't have anything, right? So uh, in life, it's like this, you know, ups and downs, you know, but it's important you come again. So if, if you spend one month working hard, get a, get a cold, didn't have good, come back go swim, go run, go bike, you know, to have a, 
uh, healthy again, you know, because once you lose the power, the desire, you're not, you shit, you know. To good health. Cheers yeah, let's hear. <laughs> and yes, to good health. A sentiment that means more now than ever. I jumped in the ocean, talked story with a Brazilian surf legend, and let beachside libations cleanse my senses, fully lubricating my doubts in preparation for the days to come. Todo mundo quer ser um pouquinho carioca, né? Eu sou carioca. <laughs> Bro, take care. Mahalo, I see, Nui. I see you in Hawaii, I hope. And then the creatures awoke. Yes, of course, my surf buddies Andrew Sereno and Chef Dario Costa don't go to bed early. They're young, staying out all night enjoying that other side of Rio. And here's the plan. Load up a few cars with our dysfunctional surf family, an assortment of wave riding and camera gear, a few cases of Ziobafa wine, and travel from Rio south along this gorgeous run of coastline. They don't call it the Costa Verde for nothing. Even on a gray, rainy day, the beauty of this region can overwhelm. Arriving at a place as beautiful as Parti quickly reboots the psyche. A little web searching tells me that Parti was founded formally by Portuguese colonists in 1667. The town was a 17th century colonial port during the Brazilian gold rush. Parti became an export port for gold to Rio and from there on to Portugal. It's one of those places that you walk through and you can feel the history. So we had fun exploring. I probably should have bought more gifts for my family, but didn't while others did. And we got hungry, real hungry. We eat. Luckily, our travel buddy, Chef Dario Costa, suggested dinner at his friend's place, Banana da Terra Restaurant, run by Chef Anya Bueno. I felt like I should be wearing a linen suit, smoking cigars, and chatting about my day spent exploring up the Camino de Oro. But no, we were in the present, and Chef Bueno treated our tattered-looking group of surfers to a first-class meal, mixing local ingredients with really refined technique. I went with fish in honor of the city's namesake. It did not disappoint. Our friend Dolmar joined us for some fun, which did not end at dinner. Oh no, that would not be Brazilian. For here, you eat until you can barely move, and then you, well, move. Costa Verde one of the world's magical places. The next day was filled with spirited enthusiasm for finding surf. Our friend Dolmar led the charge and we searched and searched. And, you know, great intentions aren't always met by Mother Nature's blessings. In the end, the boys found something to shake the ever-increasing smell that these wet cars were contributing to our existence. A cleansing of the ocean is always good for the soul.
This is a treat, as local as it gets, really. You want to see where a chef pulls inspiration? Visit his mom. Este peixe, às vezes acontece de vir na rede dos pescadores que pescam a piragi, que esse se chama paru. Esse é um peixe nobre. Separa e dá para os bebês comer. Mas é óleo? Não, o óleo está aqui. Ah, ah, ah. O óleo está aqui. Ah, o, mi, this, o miolo. E nesse pequeno hole, há uma carne muito tender do peixe. Isso. E as mães tomam com o dedo essa carne e dão para os bebês, porque é muito nutritivo. Nem parece uma mãe que teve 14 <laughs> filhos, né? I have these wonderful memories of visiting my Nona on Sundays. She would spend all weekend cooking for us. This visit brought me back to those memories. The family, the friends, the laughter, all surrounding a home-cooked meal. And the key ingredient, love. It's not surprising that this pedigree has helped Chef Luedis make his name. Obrigado, obrigado. Really a treat. And a family gathering wouldn't be complete without the father of the chef singing Gal Costa's Aquarela do Brasil. Think regional ingredients like tapioca, bananas, fresh caught seafood, and dried fish. He avoids industrial products, instead dishing out what he calls comfort food, made from scratch. When Chef Oedis offered, we weren't going to pass up an invitation to his restaurant. My mother was my first inspiration in the kitchen. So she had a roça of roça de café, tinha a roça de café, she had a roça of taioba. Nós comíamos muito banana e eu aprendi é, a cozinhar com a minha mãe. Nós fazíamos muito esse peixe de varal, porque é uma técnica milenar, caissara. Antigamente não tinha luz elétrica. A única forma de conservar o um peixe para você comer dali dois, três meses é salgando e pendurando no varal. Então eu aprendi a cozinhar, é, a minha base de cozinha é uma base bem familiar. No meu, no meu caso, eu acho que eu estou devolvendo ao universo, a Deus, tudo que a gastronomia proporcionou para mim. Então, eu acho que eu tenho que devolver para mim. Minha... Eu faço um trabalho social aqui, não sei se o Dário falou, eu dou aula para 170 Sim. crianças carentes aqui, porque eu me vejo nelas. Eu me vejo nessas crianças. Então, é... eu, eu acho que fomentando a minha região, é... ajudando a economia local, empregando gente daqui, profissionalizando gente daqui, eu... é uma forma de devolver, devolver para a terra, devolver para o universo, devolver para Deus. Old Meets New, the theme of many of my films, well played by Chef Uedes. I am truly grateful for the time and food he shared with us. On the road again, that damn winding road, the wizard of Brazilian surfing lives in the beachside town of Mariseus. Sir Gabriel Medina will not be making an appearance in this episode, but that doesn't mean we can't fully enjoy the beauty of the place he calls home. Mm -hmm. 
This is a surfer's region, and with the swell filling in, my friends Dario and Andrew were already discussing outlandish ideas like hiring a boat, exploring hard-to-find beaches where the wind whips offshore, the tubes peel with perfection, and gorgeous, sparsely dressed beach gals serve ice-cold beer to those who are brave enough to venture beyond the horizon and into this land of the killer mosquito. Could it all be true? Or perhaps just another cachaça-fueled delusion. Brazil is a complex place. Hi, I'm Big Stenter, producer. I gotta tell you something. If you're gonna make a surf movie, if the surf's good out front, you surf out front. But tomorrow, the kids are gonna go somewhere else. Will it work? Check in to find out. Ah, glorious Dick Stenta, my producing mentor, college professor. I've not seen this vision in years. He haunts my dreams with ironclad tidbits on the rights and wrongs of movie making and life. There was not much sleep that night. With childlike anticipation, we embraced the unknown. Não se iluda, minha calma, não tem nada a ver. Sou bandido, sou sem alma e minto Minha casa é o reino do mal Meu pai é um animal Minha mãe há é muito que enlouqueceu Só resta eu com a minha vaca e a minha nau Só resta eu com a minha vaca e a minha nau Sou pirata, solitário, sem mais nada the view of this coastline from the sea is inspiring. And finally, arrival. Nestled between the jungle and river mouth, picturesque stretch of sand is accessible by boat or a seven hour hike through mosquito infested mountains. You have to want it. Did I mention the mosquitoes? You can't really see them, but turns out there's a reason that all the locals wear knee high socks. We did not have socks and we paid the price. This, in construct, is a fishing village, and the waves, raw, unpredictable, and powerful, not unlike the surfers who grow up in this area. And maybe it wasn't the dreamscape of eight-second dry tubes we dreamt about, but at last, it always feels good to get in the ocean. An added treat, one of the best seaside meals I've had in a beach shack in a long time. No surprise, the local fishermen know how to cook their fish. And blessed Massimo, you can always count on Italian to mule some cold, organic Pinot Grigio to the beach. New friends connected by surf, adventure, food, all gathered around a big table, sharing stories and laughter. This would be a day to remember.
and off again, sunburnt and exhausted, chasing that last glimmer of light to guide us home. Maybe the journey really is the destination. The next day, we woke up to waves out front. And when the surf's good out front, surf out front. And then, back in the car. Back in that damn car. Luckily we ended up somewhere I always feel at home. A shaping bay. Not sure why. I've never mowed foam or run a planer or tuned a rail, but I enjoy talking with those who do. And it's especially cool when it's with a surfing icon like Brazil's Careca. Formerly of Shine Surfboards, he's seen it all, and he has shaped for some of the bohemoths in Brazilian surfing. O surf, ele, ele me trouxe um, uma, uma vida boa, uhum. entendeu? Um modo de enxergar a sociedade, porque o surfista era o cara que transgredia. É ainda o cara que transgredia, uhum. eu acho que tá voltando isso. Uhum. Entendeu? Quando começa a ir muito pro lado do esporte, do, do mecanismo de mídia, o surfista ele foge, ele foge para pro surf style. Uh -huh. Ele não gosta. Uh -huh. é, é, tirando aqueles que nasceram para aparecer como Kelly Slater uh -huh. e tal, o Tom Curren foi um cara que fugiu, uh -huh. saiu da, uh -huh. né? Uh -huh. Então eu acredito que o surf no Brasil esteja amadurecendo agora. Uh -huh. Tá? É, criando família, como a do Felipe Toledo, com filhos e tudo. E esses é que vão dar uma cara nova aqui, pelo menos para o surf brasileiro, uhum. entendeu? Que é o que suporta o surf no mundo, na América, a família de surfistas. Entendeu como é que é? Uhum. Não só gente que se aproveita do dinheiro, uhum. Uhum. mas gente uhum. que quer viver uma vida boa. Uhum. Entendeu? Ir pra praia uhum. e tal, que eu uhum. acho que é isso, não, uhum. vi, não trabalhar para viver. Uhum. E assim uh, você tem um, um contato sim, né? sim. melhor com a natureza, uhum. tudo isso. Uhum. Para mim o surf me trouxe tudo isso. Uhum. Ah, the life of the surfing nomad. 40 years ago they called you a derelict hippie and now you are part of the hip crew. And what do the hip do with their time? And they throw parties, of course. A glass of Ziobafa, perhaps? Oh, and meat. Let's make no mistake. This is my kind of party.
Now listen, because this was a highlight of the trip. Chef Dario Costa had already impressed me with his surfing. He has a very successful restaurant called Made, where fresh made bread, pasta, and pastries headline a menu that I can only describe as perfection. If we talk about culture here in Brazil, there are many thing, nice things, but about technique, there are not much thing, things. It's just because we are actually a, a young country. We have nice ingredients, but we don't have technique. So I went to many places in the world, and I saw many countries who has so much technique and uh, their, their way to cook, because they have been doing that for a while. So I kind of took a little bit of each country and put everything on, on our ingredients. So that's basically that. We have a fish bar, a seafood barbecue. That's the, the thing that I most like because you can, you have to eat by your hand. Yeah. Um, we have fish tacos. We have nasi goreng, that uh, it's an Indonesian dish that I love. It's a totality to love. So we kind of get the, the, the like the, those dishes and try to make to make it by the best way. So I kind, I kind of separate everything I do in my life. So I work, I work so hard to get my time free for surfing as much as I can. And that's the plan. I want to open a restaurant in another spot that makes it more popular. Right. And I, I, want, I want to see people eating with their hands more and more, you know? Yeah. So the goal is to open another restaurant. And, I travel to surf. Careful, man. You keep cooking like this, you're not going to have much time to surf. <laughs> I have to. Awesome. Man. <laughs> well, obrigado. Obrigado, cara. This map. Oh, it does not reflect the pain of these long car rides. But wait, look at all these trees. This is not so bad. Sao Paulo is, as cities go, beautiful. Hey, you. In TV land. A little tight in this car. Trip's gonna be over soon, but it's not over yet. And we are here for spellbinding reasons. A party with our friends from Medina. Italian style, running late to our own party. Ah, yes, wine, glorious wine to flush away my social anxieties about being surrounded with people I don't know speaking in a tongue I can't understand. But alas, friends, our host from Ivino. And is that renowned artist surfer David Carson? Why, yes, the who's who have turned out to toast our survival. Over 1,000 miles on the road traveled to get here, and, well, I guess that is Zio Does Brazil. A state of mind, really. I am so grateful for the friends made, the experiences had, and the amazing food and beauty of the people of Brazil. Alô Brasil, alô meu Pelé, eu bebo champanhe, você bebe café. Alô Brasil, alô meu Pelé, eu bebo champanhe, você bebe café. <risos> Eu vou de metrô, você vai de trem, alô Brasil.